Um, first of all, is this the end of austerity? Because some, some are writing this up as the end of austerity, Fraser. Uh, yes, it is pretty much. Have a look at the deficit forecast. They've given up even pretending we're going to balance the books someday. It's being stretched off forever into the future. And instead, we've had lots of spending without any indication where the money is going to come from. So th what they've done is thought, OK, let's, let, Jeremy Corbyn isn't going to tease us for running up a massive debt. So we're in a political hole. So let's dig our way out of it with lots of borrowed money. That's effectively what we saw okay. today. Pfizer, have they given up on austerity? Well, I think there's got to be a recognition that austerity hasn't worked when you've missed so many of your deficit reduction targets um, and when economic growth is down, uh, downgraded again, you've got to start thinking that this isn't the right approach. Saying that, the real end of austerity would be to start undoing some of those cuts. Um, well, and we've we had a little bit about that. We've got more to yeah, come. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so in, in essence, they haven't... They're still parroting the same narrative about austerity is the right thing and fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. rather than using this opportunity to invest. But do you think, essentially, this is the key, that Jeremy Corbyn's relative success against expectations in the general election has spooked them and they basically said we need to throw a bit of money at stuff? Is that, is that your take? Yeah, there were some gestures there, but they are just gestures, right? The things, the problems that they created themselves, homelessness has gone up to, doubled since they've been uh, leading government. Um, and so they put, throw yeah. some money at it. They're undoing the damage they've done. So, I mean, I'm not going to clap about that. Rupert, you were there running it when austerity was the name of the game. Do, do you feel like this is a kind of a, a significant change in direction? Well, as budgets go, it's spent quite a lot of money. So, uh, you know, he's spending tens of billions of pounds more. You know, normally that would be seen as a pretty expensive budget uh, for the public finances. The big picture, though, is it's very much not the end of austerity. Government budgets are still very, very tight for some years to come. There's very, still very difficult decisions, like a benefit freeze, for example, that's stretching several years ahead. So it's absolutely not the end of austerity. I think they have paused the level austerity. of ambition. I think that's partly for the politics and partly on the economics that right now with Brexit uncertainty isn't the time to be but doubling does, down. Does this to any of you feel like a government with a kind of a real vision of what it's doing or where it wants to go? Because he said this is not a budget about Brexit, it's about a lot more than Brexit. Mm. Did you really get the sense that they've got a kind of a a picture. Or I thought he did a better job of telling the government story, focusing on house building and also um, talking about the progressive nature of the government's reforms, income inequality, lowest in 30 years, the, the, the top yeah, of the 1%, yeah. so the, the richest 1% paying 27% of income tax. These are real progressive achievements from successive conservative reforms and the Tories have been a bit bad about boasting about that. But now, they're, now they are. So I actually thought that for once he was beginning to point out that this is not just about cutting, this is about building a fairer as well as a stronger country. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to claim that we're a fairer country when we have so many more people going to food banks, when we have those in the rich list seeing their wealth double whilst that has happened. Inequality well, down. inequality has been coming down. So no, I mean, the stats come on. say come that we are a more equal society. Statistical questions over there. Which measure you use? Income in that measure of income inequality is very bad at the extremes, both extremes. You can I ask the IFS that and they will tell you yeah. that. I, and, it's true you know, at the very top around the, the world. But the overall measure of inequality in the UK has come down since 2010. I mean, I and actually the people who, whose incomes are full the most are those people at the top. But I suppose I'm just more interested in what we've basically been saying. The narrative since the election has been this is a leaderless government. It's a, it doesn't know what it's doing, where it's going. It's just passing the, time. Has this game changed that? But the elephant in the room in the short term is, is Brexit, obviously. I mean, for the economy yeah. and for what our country's going to look like for the next few years, Do we need to abolish nothing else matters. Until Brexit? <laughs> we just don't know what anything... I mean, all of this is a sort of fantasy league. Yeah, but this is a statement for the government to try to say something. And the biggest thing today, it hasn't been a disaster, which is more than you can say <laughs> about the party conference, about the election, <laughs> about the last budget. But he needed to get through this and it not to implode. And so far, the night is young, but it hasn't. What a low bar. What a low bar that <laughs> well, we have that's set. where we are right that's now. That's what we I mean... set. And meanwhile, meanwhile, we have more nurses, 30% more nurses leaving than joining. But we they're about to get more money from this budget. 88% of education uh, of schools facing real term. Mm -hmm. Cuts. numbers of kids in good or outstanding skills? I mean, listen, listen <laughs> when you look at the stats, whether it's child poverty and that relative child poverty is going up, when you look at food bank usage, when you look at homelessness, this is, this is not a sign of a healthy economy. Rupert, how far do you think this is the 
if not the Jeremy Corbyn kind of nod to him, at least a nod to Ed Miliband. There does seem a lot of Milibandism about this government at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I think it is a nod to Jeremy mm. Corbyn more than Ed Miliband, because mm. Ed Miliband lost an election yeah, yeah, and, and, and Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn also lost an election, but he gained yeah. a lot of seats <laughs> and he spooked the Tory party. I think some of the spending money on the health service is something that any Conservative government would do because you, you want to, you know, I think what Chris Cook was saying earlier about the potential war coming down the line between the, the NHS England and the government is going to be something to watch, but you're going to have to keep spending money. I mean, your point about vision, I did think that something that Philip Hammond managed to do today, uh, which was just the beginning, was, was try and give us a picture of that in the long term there are some things that might be more important than Brexit. I said Brexit was the main thing for the next couple of years. I still think that's true. But these new technologies, driverless cars, biotechnology, longer lifespans, these are going to be much more important than Brexit. And he did at least have a long section of the speech and some serious measures trying to talk about science and technology in an interesting way. And I think that was a small achievement. I mean, it's interesting, that Fraser, from the same sort of end of the political spectrum. Mm. Rupert is thinking that Jeremy Corbyn has made quite a lot of running here. Oh, sure, absolutely. I mean, the spectre of Cor he, Corbyn now terrifies the Conservatives. Six months ago, they were laughing at him. So there has been a big change. But does this work then? So, so Ken Clark said it's not Corbyn light. Mm. But do you think what he's done kind of shoots the Corbyn fox, the no. rail cards for, for 26 to 30 year olds? No, I think that there are bribes and gimmicks and will be seen as such. But I think we're at the beginnings of a recovery right now. This is not a game changer, but it's, it's beginning to show a government which does know where it's going and has made a few reasonable steps today in getting there. This was a nothing budget. There was nothing really in it. Like you say, it was gimmicks, it was gestures. And actually, Hammond stood up and said this is about the future and being fit for the future. And then he had nothing, no substance to really start backing that up. Well, young people start, you know, because a lot of this is designed to get young people back, mm. isn't it? The figures are shocking at the bottom of the I mean, the come end. on, what a, fire, what a stamp duty holiday when young people now are coming out of university with £50,000 of debt. Do you think it'll work on young people, Rupert? I don't think it'll work overnight, no, but I don't think we should think about it in that terms. You know, we've very likely got four years or more until the next election. This is about steadying the ship. The, you know, it's about getting a government that is not going to collapse month to month <laughs> right. that can deliver Brexit. And, you know, by the time we have the next election, we're going to have a new leader of the Conservative Party and a the world is going to look very different. A lot of water would have passed under the bridge. Thanks all uh, very much.